There is much concern about the proposed World Health Organization Pandemic Treaty. This channel has previously produced a video describing what is actually happening and the proposed timeframes. This video lays out the arguments against such a treaty. Large volumes of books could be written on the details of this subject. We will provide the highlights. For context, the key objectives of the Pandemic Treaty is to urgently strengthen WHO as the leading and directing authority on global health at the centre of the global health architecture. The treaty would be legally binding under international law. We now offer just some of a long list of arguments against such a treaty. The first argument can be summarised by simply stating the World Health Organization is not competent to devise and carry out such a treaty. Deciding on the measures to employ in order to control and prevent pandemics involves many disciplines and areas of expertise that are outside the core competencies of the WHO. Such measures involve much, much more than issues of public and physical health. The WHO itself states a pandemic such as COVID-19 is not just a public health crisis, but one that would touch every sector. It called for countries to take a whole-of-government, whole-of-society approach. The WHO cannot possibly possess the skills required for such a task. This is partly because of the uniqueness of the many countries of the world and even the regions within these countries. Again, the WHO recognises that each country is in a unique situation. But much more than just the uniqueness of each country is the vast range of skills and wisdom required to tackle a pandemic. Deciding on which measures to employ to control and prevent pandemics involve an enormous range of skills. This list is just a few. An expert knowledge of economics is required to evaluate the impact of the measures on the economy of a country and the resulting effects on the living standards of its citizens. Ethical issues cut across all these disciplines and their evaluation. For example, is it better for a country to lock down when that might blight the lives of its citizens for many years in the future? Education. What are the impacts of the proposed measures on the education and very futures of children up to and including those at university? Social sciences. What would be the impact of the measures on society as a whole? During the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen quite terrible social divides created. Statistical and data analysis. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen a truly appalling lack of skill and expertise in these disciplines. And politics. Only a national government can decide on how proposed pandemic measures will affect its nation. This is very well summarised by a member of the European Parliament, Christine Anderson, when she asks, to what extent will the Commission ensure that the citizen who has no direct vote in a body such as the WHO is not bypassed in the decision-making process and that a shift of competence further and further away from the voter does not lead to an increasing de democratization of our society. The next argument states that the funding of the WHO makes it highly vulnerable to biased decisions. There are other examples to support this argument, but a very obvious one is the funding provided by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It is more than that 
of many countries and is less than only Germany, the United Kingdom and the USA. There is thus a large potential for the WHO, that is part of the United Nations, to be influenced by a private company. You may think that there are checks and balances within large organisations that would prevent such bias. If that is the case, they do not appear to be working. The strong bias towards the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is very obvious. In the opinion of this channel, this makes the position of Dr Tedros as Director General of the World Health Organization, it makes it completely untenable. The next argument against the proposed treaty. There is no widely accepted consensus on how to respond to a pandemic. Each nation must make its own decision. Sweden took a different COVID-19 approach to many countries based on its own scientific advice and its own uniqueness of topography, population size, etc. The approach of focused attention proposed by the Great Barrington Declaration has been well argued and has been signed by around 929,000 people. Lockdowns have been strongly opposed by experts, such as Professor Mark Woolhouse, who states that lockdowns aren't a public health policy, they signify a failure of public health policy. The MEP Christine Anderson again believes that many government responses to COVID-19 have purportedly violated or manipulated many treaties, including human rights agreements. It must be noted that under a global treaty, if the WHO makes a mistake, then the whole world suffers. This cannot be tolerated. Each nation must make its own decision. It must be understood that the WHO is part of the United Nations and a binding treaty would contravene Article 2 of the United Nations Charter. This says, nothing contained in the present Charter shall authorise the United Nations to intervene in matters which are essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of any state. And the final argument is, of course, that such a treaty would put far, far too much power in the hands of one organisation. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. If you appreciated this video, please like and subscribe. You are also invited to join our community on locals.com. You can click on the button to connect directly with our locals.com website. You may also be interested in this video released some time ago.